A Houston artist is rolling up his sleeves to help families of the fallen Baton Rouge police officers. We'll bring you those details. Traces of THC has been found in one city's water supply, and it's now prompting the FBI to investigate. We have that and more in the next 20 minutes in your fast cast. Cameron Venable, you're standing by with weather. What's going on? There's one shower out there in the Oklahoma Panhandle. It's quickly dying, though. It's going to be hot as well. I'll give you the details coming up. You're watching News Channel 10's Early Show Fastcast. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. The Texas Department of State Health Services is reporting this morning one confirmed case of the Zika virus in Gray County. Now, this new case marks 69 reports of Zika in Texas. Officials could not give many details about the new case in the panhandle, but they do say the person infected traveled abroad to an area where Zika is spreading. Among the 69 cases reported in the state, three are pregnant women. One is an infant who was infected before birth, and another is someone who had sexual contact with a traveler. This new case in the panhandle is now prompting local health officials to remind the public to do their best to avoid those mosquito bites. Wearing DEET, dressing in long sleeves and pants, drain standing water all day every day. The four D's are so important. And the people who are most at risk are pregnant women and their unborn children because we know that Zika can cause microcephaly and so prevention is the key. The city has been able to educate the public on Zika and West Nile through their Mission Mosquito campaign. It's all in an effort to help people avoid mosquito bites. The city launched Mission Mosquito earlier this month and ordered 7,500 kits to offer to the public. About half of those kits have already been given out. Autopsy results confirm the body found in the Playa Lake Wednesday morning in Amarillo was seven year old Alexis Wartina. The preliminary autopsy found the cause of death to be drowning. According to the Department of Family and Protective Services, the girl's four siblings are now in their care. The department is currently seeking appropriate relative replacements, but Amarillo Special Crimes continues to investigate this case. They're asking anyone with information to please call 378-9468. We're headed over to Storm Track 10 meteorologist Cameron Venable. He's got his eye on the radar, but also on those high temps. They're climbing already, aren't they, this morning? Yeah, it's going to be very, very hot out there. We do have a little bit of radar activity. Let's take a look at the Super Doppler right here. You can see that shower is just dying. We're about... About seven minutes for, from sunrise. Once that happens, I'm pretty sure this thing will collapse automatically. Uh, you can see right here, just north of Keys, a look, look at that, it died again on that next sweep. Just a little bit of light rain just north of Keys. It's uh, weakening pretty quickly. Let's take a look at the motions you can see right here. Over uh, time, it is just dying. Uh, we had some yellow. It looks like Boise City got some decent rainfall. It was moving slowly, which is some good news. It dropped some much needed rain. 71 in Amarillo, we're at 74 in Childers, about 78 in Tucum Carry, about 72 in Clayton right now. Winds mainly southerly, south southwesterly, 12 in Amarillo, and about 14 in Dumas. You can see right here, we do have that ridge eye pressure. Uh, that's what's keeping us nice and hot. However, on the peripheries of it, you know, the New Mexico high country, parts of the southern United States, you can see thunderstorms around it. Now, the ridge is going to start to back off a little bit to the west, which means we should be reintroducing thunderstorm chances. I'll tell you when, and I'll send it back to news. Cameron, thank you. A former police officer is supporting his fallen brothers by donating custom caskets. Trey Gainham is giving the personalized caskets to the Baton Rouge officers who were killed last week. He spent time researching the officers, speaking with their families, all while designing the casket to personalize it. He says donating them is his way of saying thank you for their service. Visitation and funeral services for the three officers start today and last through Monday. Heat and spare change left in one woman's car seat left her with third degree burns in Oklahoma. That's pretty hot. Melissa Sechrist says hot pennies left on her in pain after a cup of spare change spilled on her seat. She tried icing the burns, but it started to blister. Listen, look at that, causing her to go to the hospital. Doctors told her she had third degree burns on her thighs. They gave her antibiotics to prevent an infection, but Sechrist says she wants to warn people and hopes it doesn't happen to anybody else. Who would have thought? Well, police in Hugo, Colorado are urging residents to not use water after authorities found evidence of THC. THC is the ingredient found in marijuana plants. They made the discovery when a company performed a routine employee drug test. Investigators believe someone may have tampered with one of the town's wells. Right now, the well is not feeding the town's water supply, but citizens are 
having water, bottled water brought in. The FBI and Colorado Bureau of Investigation are now on the case. The Miami officer who shot an unarmed counselor says it was an accident. Charles Kinsey was shot in the leg while trying to help his autistic patient to get out of the street. Well, police say the officer intended to shoot the patient whom he thought had a gun. It turned out to be a toy truck. The officer said he thought the man was going to harm Kinsey and he has been placed now on paid administrative leave. Police say the city is looking to settle the issue quickly. The state attorney is investigating. Fox News Chief Roger Ailes is out of a job after stepping down amid sexual harassment allegations. Listen to this. Former Fox anchor Gretchen Carlson and at least 20 other women have accused Ailes of sexual harassment. Those accusations led to an internal investigation. He and his attorneys have denied the charges. Ailes was responsible for turning Fox News into a powerful conservative force in politics and media. Rupert Murdoch will now serve as the interim CEO. Well, you can now receive a discount on a student loan through Amazon Prime. They are teaming up with Wells Fargo to offer a, point, a 0 0.5 interest rate discount. While the offer is for members of its student prime program, there's no application fee from the bank. Repayment doesn't start until six months after you leave school. Wells Fargo says the undergrad loans available through Amazon come with either fixed or variable interest rates, either one. Graduate students are also eligible for the discount. Donald Trump promised to keep America safe during his speech at the GOP convention. And one man made history while standing on that stage. We're going to explain when you come back and join us on the early show. 646, would you look at that? Pick three. Are those your numbers, Cameron? Good luck. Oh, man, I wish they were. Uh, it's going to be hot out there. We're going to take a look at the radar, maybe some thunderstorm chances after the break. You're watching News Channel 10's Early Show with Angie Wynn and weather with meteorologist Alan Gwynn. You're watching News Channel 10's Early Show Fastcast. Let's take a look at the Super Doppler right here. You can see it is dying. As expected, the sun has come up and it's just going to collapse. Uh, let's take a look right here at the motions. You can see there was some decent rain near Boy City. Uh, Keys looks like they stayed out of it. Kind of just moved out to the north-northeast very, very slowly. And as that sun comes up, it is 
dying. Let's take a look right here at the current conditions. We had some thunderstorms out here. You had some anvils, and now it's all just glaci glaciated, and they are dying because that sun's coming up. It's disrupting the nighttime thunderstorm process. We have about 71 degrees south southwest winds at 12, 59% relative humidity, a 56 degree dew point. About 74 in Childress right now. You can see 70 in Herford, about 71 in Amarillo, 75 in uh, Dumas. We do have about 78 up in Tucum Carry, and still only 72 in Clayton. Winds out there south southwesterly. About 12 in Amarillo, about 14 in Dumas. Let's take a look at the wind track. Starting off with those south southwesterly winds. They will pick up those southerly, 10, uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour. You can see that right there. And it does persist through most of the evening and nighttime hours. A little bit of red right there in your two compare. The ridge eye pressure is dominating the weather picture. Thunderstorms around it. It's going to shift to the west, though, which means we have thunderstorm chances returning because we'll be in northwest flow. That's more or less late week and through next week. See right here? Got to get through some hot weather, though. And then after that, thunderstorm chances return Monday through about Wednesday. I'll take a look at that, and I'll send it back to news. Cameron, thank you very much. GOP nominee Donald Trump says the first task under his administration will be to restore law and order. He vowed to save America from crime and terrorism. Trump claimed he will suspend immigration from any nation plagued by it. He also repeated his plan to build a border wall to stop immigrants and drugs from entering communities. But there will be one exception to that rule. Here's what he had to say. I only want to admit individuals into our country who will support our values and love our people. Anyone who endorses violence, hatred, or oppression is not welcome in our country and never, ever will be. He went on to say Americans are far less safe due to Obama's President Obama's presidency and Hillary Clinton's time as Secretary of State. Well, tech billionaire Peter Thiel made history at the Republican National Convention by saying he's proud to be gay. The announcement made him the first speaker in the party's history to do so. Thiel warned the party against fighting social issues like the controversial bathroom policy. He called for a clear focus on the economy and an anti-war foreign policy. He says Trump is the best candidate to solve those issues. Philadelphia is gearing up for the Democratic National Convention. Final preparations are underway at Philly's Wells Fargo Center for Monday's start of the Democratic National Convention. Hillary Clinton is expected to formally announce her running mate during a weekend campaign swing through Florida. Even those close to the selection process say Virginia Senator Tim Kaine and Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack are leading contenders. Well, the NBA has severed ties with North, Car North Carolina and they're moving the All-Star game somewhere else. And here's why. This after the league disagreed with the state's bathroom law. It requires people to use the bathroom that corresponds with their birth gender. Some say the law discriminates against the LGBT community, but lawmakers say it protects privacy rights. The league says the state could host the 2019 games, but only if the law changes. The Department of Justice has filed an antitrust lawsuit against three major health insurance companies. The suit is in attempt to block two proposed mergers between Anthem and Cigna, as well as Aetna and Humana. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says the mergers would fundamentally reshape the health insurance industry and leave much of it in the hands of just three mammoth insurance companies. She says it would hurt the competition in key markets. Both Anthem and Aetna will be fighting those lawsuits. An event to back our boys in blue is going on tomorrow. We've got the details for you. And here's a quick look at what's ahead on CBS this morning. Coming up, fact checking Donald Trump's acceptance speech and John Dickerson and Frank Luntz on the choice to focus on threats over hope. Plus the Clinton team's reaction to that speech and the latest on her running mate decision. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning next.
Now, the most watched news in the Panhandle. The Early Show on News Channel 10. How are you on a Friday? That's right, I said it. Friday, we made it at 6.56 for helping you wake up this morning. We're glad you're with us. You have the chance to roll up your sleeves and give the gift of life for two separate events. Here's more with News Channel 10's Rachel Goldhart. Rachel? Hi, Angie. The Clovis Police Department has announced a Battle of the Badges Blood Drive. Let's take a look. The drive will be held today at 320 Mitchell in Clovis, New Mexico from noon until 5. The police department will be going head to head with the Clovis Fire Department in hopes of collecting the most blood. Donors can pledge their support to whichever badge they choose and will re receive a free t-shirt. If you are not in Clovis but would still like to donate blood, we'd like to remind you that the Boots vs. Badges blood drive is still ongoing here in Amarillo. If you can stop by the Coffee Memorial Blood Center at 7500 Wallace Boulevard between 8 this morning and 430 to donate and vote for your favorite local heroes, either fire or law enforcement. All donors will receive a free Boots vs. Badges t-shirt. Reporting live in the studio, Rachel Goldhart, News Channel 10. Rachel, thank you. Tomorrow, a group of Jeep owners will participate in a statewide Back the Blue event. They will decorate their Jeeps with thin blue line flags, American flags, blue balloons, and streamers. They are inviting anyone who would like to join them to do so. The rally begins at 4 with a procession at the church at Quail Creek on Tascosa Road. It will end at Hillside Christian Church there on Sansi just southwest of town where a few speakers will address the crowd at 8 in the evening. Those attending are asked to decorate their vehicle to show appreciation for law enforcement officers and also anyone flying flags such as the Confederate or concerning guns will be asked to remove them. So just a heads up on that. If you have those flags, they're going to ask you to take those down. Well, today's trending video shows there is still faith in humanity. Strangers came together to save a man's life in South Carolina. Cameron, you got to see this. Jonathan Jansen crashed and flipped his convertible into a ditch. Well, it trapped him underneath and Good Samaritans, those guys you see there, all pulled in and pulled over to help get him out. Can you believe he walked away without a scratch? Look at that. Upside down in his car in a ditch. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh my gosh. The video has been viewed over 50,000 times, but how awesome to see people that will actually, you know, step aside and help you at the time you need it most. So that's good to see. That Ho is pretty crazy. Yeah, hopefully puts a smile on your face to know that there is faith in humanity. We like to see those trending videos. We do that at the end of our show every day, Monday through Friday, and we'll have uh, a really cute one for you on Monday. I can't wait to show it to you, but um, so much to see. Now the radar, those folks in Keys are like, oh, it was a mirage, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It kind of missed them. Uh, it mainly hit uh, Boise City, as you can see right there, light to moderate rain. Tracked up to the north-northeast, you can see near Keys, it is dying. The sun has come up. It is collapsing pretty quickly. Let's take a look at the uh, day track forecast. You can see by 8 a.m. it will be 75 degrees. We'll be up to 84 degrees by 10 a.m. Winds start to pick up a little bit. They'll be south-southwest 10 to 15. We'll have southwest winds 15 to 20 by about 10 a.m. You'll notice the rest of the day we're going to warm up to about 100 degrees, so it's going to be hot out there. You can see right there, southerly winds out about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So they do decide to ease up a little bit in the late afternoon hours. Let's take a look at the supercast here. You can see we got to get through some hot days. We're talking upper 90s and 100 degrees on both Friday and Saturday. After that, we'll just have lower to mid 90s and maybe thunderstorm chances returning Monday through about Wednesday. Right. Can you believe how hot those pennies were in that ladies' That car? was pretty crazy, too. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Cameron. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining us all morning long on The Early Show. Have a wonderful weekend.